Hello, today we're going to review security awareness training so that we can keep you, our agents, our clients, and our company safe and secure. Our takeaways from today are always think twice, no clicking, no phishing, report suspicious emails and activity, you reserve the right to say no, be vigilant and be aware, and security is everyone's responsibility. Our agenda today will be purpose, threats, prevention techniques, mobile devices, passwords, detection, and your security role. Our first stop is purpose. So back when the internet was first created, many people would hack into other computers, other systems because it was fun, because they could, or if they're like Ferris Bueller, they wanted to change their attendance numbers. Uh, nowadays, it's more about financial gain and maybe a little espionage. Our next stop is different information security threats. So our four biggest threats are natural, physical, technical, and people. Natural threats can be defined as anything from nature, fire, flooding, lightning strike, anything of that sort. Physical would be leaving your devices, your documents laying around for people to easily view, or if someone is wandering around the building unaccompanied. Technical threats would be different types of malware or viruses. It can also come in the form of ransomware. Ransomware is when someone hacks into your computer, they lock up all your information, and they demand a ransom. Ransom is usually required to be Bitcoin because Bitcoin is not traceable by the federal government and usually very expensive. Our next and largest threat are people. So people can jeopardize the system through unintentional or deliberate actions by employees and non-employees. You've got bribing and coercing, opening doors, such as if there's a building that needs a security card to get in, Somebody might stand outside with a heavy box, wait for an employee to come along and say, hey, I can't get my key card out. I've got this really heavy box. Can you let me in? Um, eavesdropping is as it sounds, people overhearing sensitive conversations or even looking over your shoulder at your different screens and social engineering. Different types of social engineering might be if somebody comes into the office dressed as an IT personnel, they might say, I've come to repair your machine and I have software updates. They might call you and say, this is John, the system admin, what's your password? I need to get into your computer. Or you might get an email that says, ABC Bank has noticed a problem with your account. We need you to log in and enter your credentials. So now we have a training exercise. This is a phone call script. Let's see if you can detect some of the social engineering tactics at work. Hi, this is John from IT. I've been working with Molly Iverson on a new security initiative for our team at Coldwell Banker, and I need your help in order to get this done by the end of the day. I'm just going to email you a link and all you have to do is click it. This will allow a new security update to be easily downloaded onto your computer. The update is going to make your computer more secure and also faster. It shouldn't take more than a few minutes for the download to finish, so you can give yourself a mini break while it's running. Once the download is complete, all you have to do is restart your computer and you'll be set. If you have a few minutes now, I can walk you through how to kick off this process over the phone. Let's start with you clicking the link I just emailed you. You'll find it in your inbox. The first thing they're using here is the sense of urgency. We need it done by the end of the day. If you have a few minutes now and let's start. They're also using credibility. They're dropping Molly's name. She is our head of IT at Coldwell Banker Hedges, so she might actually call you about something with your computer. They've, they're throwing in a personal incentive, so if you do this, your computer will be more secure, it'll be faster, and you get a mini break, so total win-win, right? Last thing is the power dynamic. They're saying they're from IT. Most people don't question that. They need help from IT. So next, we're going to look at different phishing email campaigns. Um, this is the use of emails that appear to originate from a trusted source to trick a user into entering valid credentials at a fake website. So if you look at this email from Amazon, um, the true email address is up here at the top and it's coming from muzoncanada.ca. 
probably not really coming from Amazon. It's also very generic. It's being sent to client. And if you hover over the website, you can see that it's being redirected to something that's not an Amazon website. Looking at this Apple um, email, again, it's very generic, dear user. We're sorry to inform you that your last purchase has been canceled. For some security reasons, we put your Apple account on hold until we hear from you. Um, again, something to keep an eye out for. Do you have an Apple account? If you don't, it's probably a scam. And next, we've got an email from Google Drive. A lot of times, phishing emails have very poor grammar. As you can see with this sentence right here, click here, just sign in with your email to view the document. It is very important, semicolon. Again, poor grammar. Do you have a Google account? Have you done anything with Google Drive? You know, something to think about there. So we sent out a phishing campaign to everyone at Coldwell Banker Hedges. Um, it came from Coldwell Banker Human Resources. Hello, employees. In preparing for 2019, we've recently made some changes to our benefits plan in order to align with new state regulations. To ensure 100% compliance, we ask all employees to electronically sign off on these changes by no later than Friday, November 23rd. We understand this falls over the Thanksgiving holiday. However, the process should only take five minutes to complete. To view details of the benefit changes and to document your review, please log in to our internal portal and click the alert shown in the top right-hand corner. This will take you directly to the benefits document. We greatly appreciate your participation in helping us achieve compliance. If you have any questions or have trouble accessing the document, please reach out to us at humanresources at cobalbanker.com. Looking forward to a great year end and happy Thanksgiving to all. Cobalt Banker, Human Resources. So if you look at the top here at where the email address is coming from, it's coming from prodc.us. It is not a true Coldwell Banker email address. Again, it's very generic with hello employees and from Coldwell Banker Human Resources. There should be some kind of name, phone number, signature block. Um, they're throwing in your sense of urgency with by no later than Friday the 23rd, and it only takes five minutes. And again, the benefit to you is that you get some benefits. So if you look at this on your phone, if you click on the email address on your phone, it'll actually show you the true email address underneath. Of the people that we sent this email to, uh, 61 opened it, 17 clicked on the link, and 11 filled in their credentials. Luckily, this was fake, but again, be aware when you're looking at different emails. So different types of prevention techniques. With physical threats, Shut down or lock your computer and keep your workstations clean. Position your devices to prevent unauthorized view. Don't leave your devices in your vehicles and use cross shredders to dispose of data. Here's an example of a clean desk versus a messy desk. It's always a good idea to put your files away at the end of the day, lock them up if you can just to keep them safe and secure. We've got an example here of line shredding so on the left, the Iranian government found all the pieces of this document that was shredded by the U.S. government, and they put it all back together manually. On the right is an example of um, software that can put shredded documents back together. Cross-shredding shreds a document into little tiny snowflake squares so that it's very difficult to put it back together. And if you're super paranoid, you could just burn the documents too. So reducing your client risk, at some point you will need to get social security numbers, mortgage numbers, other things like that from your clients. Always encourage them to call you with that information. Um, you'll also need to make copies of earnest money. We want to make sure that you cover the MICR numbers before you make those copies. And here is a short demonstration video. Okay, I'm okay. going to show you the proper way to cover the MICR numbers, numbers on the check, on the check. For, earnest for earnest money. It takes one takes post, one to, post note. to note, you get it you get in the middle, middle and cover the majority, the majority of the MICR numbers, numbers. numbers. You're, all you're all good, that's all it, that's takes. All it takes. So now, so you now, do this you before, do this before, you, make before you make a copy, put it on the copy screen, blank piece of paper on top, and the 
copy your nose what size to make it. You can also change the size on the panel. Scan it, scan it, boom, you're done. Security and tag. So preventing technical threats, make sure that you back up your data and test your backup. Maybe consider using iCloud, Google Drive, OneDrive, any other cloud systems. Um, permanently destroy your sensitive data from all your devices. So if you delete it off of your phone or computer, make sure that it's deleted out of the cloud or external hard drive or wherever else you have it backed up. Um, use the CBH security containers for sensitive paper materials. All of our offices have gray shred bins. You can put your papers in there and they will later be shredded. And don't use USBs found in public places. Someone has figured out how to put viruses on USB drives. So if you find it out in the parking lot, you plug it into your computer, you could unleash a whole bunch of viruses all over your hard drive. And preventing people threats. Should somebody come into the office, um, you can always ask them all kinds of questions. You can tell them no, they need to come back later. You could call the office they say they're from and see if it's, if it's real. And limit visitor access and escort them around the building. Don't just let people wander around. Um, with phone calls, don't provide your personal information until you know that it's a legit call. And with emails, don't open attachments. Don't click on the links. If it's in regard to one of your accounts, delete the email and go over to Amazon or Google or Apple and log in directly with them. So now you're web browsing and mobile devices. So the threat here is allowing unauthorized individuals to view, manipulate, or steal sensitive information through unsecure web browsing and mobile device practices. So be aware of fake Wi-Fi hotspots should you be out, you know, at Starbucks. There might be a fake one that looks legit. Maybe it's called Star B or S Bucks. You log into that, but maybe it's actually a guy sitting in the corner that's, you know, brought up a fake Wi-Fi. He can now get into your phone or your computer and check out what you're doing. When in doubt, use your data. Uh, when you're on a web browser, you can enable your pop-up blockers. You can turn off the autofill functionality. Don't let it save your passwords. Don't let it save your bank information. And always log out of websites when you're finished. Don't just hit the X in the window especially if you're on one of the public computers in any of our offices. If you leave your account logged in, the next person comes in and your email's still up, they could send emails for you, they can look through all your emails, they could change your password for you. Always log out when you are done. Um, on your web browser, HTTP versus HTTPS. HTTP is not a secure website. So if a hacker were to break in, they could see your password for exactly what it is. If you're on HTTPS, that is a secure encrypted website. So if a hacker were to break in, they're going to see a whole jumble of letters, not your true password. So let's talk about passwords. So make sure you keep your passwords private. The preferred length is at least like 16 or more characters. Think about making them very lengthy, not necessarily complex. You could use a passphrase like, it's tea time, instead of just a password. Use song lyrics or a movie quote and change them often, like every six months to a year. Um, don't disclose your password to anybody. Don't use your birthday, your social, your phone number, family names. Um, don't use the username as the password. Don't share your passwords across accounts and websites, meaning your Amazon password should be different from your Google password, should be different from your Apple password, should be different from your Target password, and don't bunch together numerical or special characters at the beginning or end of the password. So there's a website, um, howsecureismypassword.net, and these four passwords were tried out there. And based on that website, it's going to take 188 quadrillion years for that last one, United States is where we live, to be hacked by someone. So again, think complexity, excuse me, think lengthy, not complexity. And if you want to test out your own passwords, go ahead with that website and see how strong they are. Um, again, with passwords, we want you to have different passwords across all your accounts. 
that's a lot to remember. So here are a few different options for password keepers where you only have to remember one major password to get into your password keeper account. Malware detection. So should you get a virus or something like that on your computer, you might see a lot of slow loading signs, you might get some system crashes, lots of pop-ups, unsuccessful login attempts, even though you're absolutely sure you've got the right username and password. If your firewall gets turned off, all of these are signs that there could be a virus on your computer. If that's the case, you'll need to reach out to someone to get that fixed. So now your security goal, always think twice, no clicking, no phishing. You reserve the right to say no, report suspicious emails and activity, be vigilant and be aware, Security is everyone's responsibility, not just the IT department. Thank you for listening today.